Thunderbird pronouns. Om Magyana Timarandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chaksurun Militanyena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Vancha Kaupa Tarupyasya Kripa Sindhu Bhayevacha Patitanam Pavane Bhyo Vaishnavibhyo Namo Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasudeva Bhaktavinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare So we're reading Nectar of Devotion and we're on chapter number uh, oh. Oh, yes, garage. Now, okay. Now back, yeah? Okay. Yeah, unstable. Mm. All right, so we're reading under the heading, uh, Giving Up the Company of Non-Devotees. And we're on the last paragraph of that section. Hare Krishna? Yes. Okay, okay. Okay. Okay, okay. The Mayavadi, okay. So we're reading, the Mayavadi impersonalists say that one may worship any form of the Lord and that it doesn't matter. Mayavadi, Pukhi Mishya nai lup lak ta wa khao cha bu cha lup lak nai kong kong pakawan ko dai. And they say it doesn't matter because everyone will reach the same destination anyway. But it doesn't say that in the Bhagavad Gita. In the Bhagavad Gita, it says clearly that those who worship the demigods will reach the planets of the demigods. And those who are the devotees of the Lord, they will be promoted to the Lord's abode, the kingdom of God. So actually, those persons who are worshippers of demigods are condemned in the Bhagavad Gita. It is said, in, it is said that they worship the demigods due to their lusty desires. And they have lost all their intel they have lost their intelligence and they have therefore taken to worship these demigods. If they were actually intelligent, they would worship the Supreme Lord. So Rupa Goswami quotes and he said, In the Vishnu Rahasya, these demigod worshippers are condemned. Rupa Goswami Vishnu Rahasya, 
And in the, in the statement it says, it is better to live with the most dangerous animals than to associate with people who worship demigods. So we should understand why it's dangerous. It's dangerous because people who worship the demigods, they're very attached to their material desires. And they will do anything to get their material desires. And their minds are very polluted and distorted because of their desires. So we have to be very careful about people who worship demigods. Alright, we're going to go on to another a very important section. The next section is about not accepting unfit disciples. And we should not construct many temples. And we shouldn't read many books either. So we're going to talk about these things tonight. First thing is about unfit disciples. We should not accept people who are not qualified to be disciples. Mm. So Prabhupada writes, he says, a person may have many disciples, but he should not act in a way that he will be obliged to any of them for some, for some favor or for some action. Just like you may have a disciple who is quite rich, who has a lot of money. So we should be careful about how you deal with a, a disciple who has a lot of money. Because he has a lot of money, he thinks he can use his money to control the spiritual master. He thinks the spiritual master needs the money of the disciple. So this is a very foolish kind of this. It's a very foolish disciple who thinks like that. And sometimes we may accept disciples just for the sake of having many disciples, even though they're not very qualified. Some disciples, they may not 
do the chanting regularly. They may not follow strictly all the principles. They don't get up early in the morning to chant Hare Krishna. They don't, they don't engage in hearing the scriptures in the association of devotees. And sometimes they will eat food which is not cooked by devotees, which is not prasadam. Sometimes they may not follow the, the, the different uh, festivals, just like on Ekadasi we're supposed to fast, so they may not follow. Some people just want to get initiation and then they don't want to practice devotional service. They think, I'm a devotee, I'm initiated. But they don't follow any of the rules and regulations. So these kind of people are useless. They don't help the spiritual master. So a spiritual teacher can accept people to be his disciples, but they have to be qualified. Now sometimes we will ask people, are you chanting? And they say, yes, I'm chanting every day, 16 rounds. But they may, they may not be chanting, they may be cheating, they may be telling a lie. So if they tell a lie like that, then they're cheating, they think they're cheating the spiritual teacher, but actually they're cheating themselves. So we should be very careful. We should know Krishna knows everything. And he knows who is chanting and who is not chanting. And Krishna knows who is following the principles and who is not following. So we have to be very careful. To, we, we first thing is to be honest and not to lie or cheat. Then we, then we can be qualified to become a, to get initiation, to be a disciple. Just wait one minute, I have to get something because it's going to rain here. No more, if you make what is you need,
หมดวันที่บางทีหนูพูดเสียงเบาแล้วไม้มันไกลขอบคุณค่ะโอ้ big black a big black cloud is coming over Mayapur <laughs> oh good it's going to cool it will cool everything down it's been very hot All right, so then Prabhupada says, he said, uh, one should not be very enthusiastic about constructing new temples. And nor should one be very enthusiastic about reading All different types of books. The books we need to read are the books which will help us advance in devotional service. So Srila Prabhupada tells us which books we need to read. He said we should read very carefully the Bhagavad Gita, Srimad Bhagavatam, the nectar of devotion, and the teachings of Lord Chaitanya. And then Prabhupada said, if we read these four books, that will give us sufficient knowledge to understand the teachings of Lord Krishna. And Prabhupada said, we don't need to take the trouble to read Other books. <laughs> of course, in Prabhupada's time, those were the, the main books which were available. Alright. And then Prabhupada, or Rupa Goswami quotes from the Srimad Bhagavatam, 7th canto, 13th chapter, verse number 8. Rupa Goswami, Dai Atibai Nepoti, Jet Kong, Srimad Bhagavatam, Poti Sip Sam, Solok Pad, now Pak Jet. So Narada Muni was discussing with Maharaj Yudhisthira about the duties in the different orders of society. Narada Muni, Kana Sontana, Kap Maharaj, Yudhisthira, Kyo Gamnati Tang Tang, Let one not Tang Tang, Nay Sang Kong. So he mentions about the different rules which are there for sannyasis. Sannyasis mean people who have renounced the material world. Now generally, sannyasis can accept disciples. They can become, they can be gurus and they can give initiation. But in Krishna consciousness, even people who are not sannyasi, they can also become gurus. They may be in the householder ashram, they may have a wife, and they may be in, but, but they can also be spiritual teachers. They may be in the household ashram, they may have a wife, and they may be in, but, but they can also be spiritual teachers. 
มีครอบครัวเขาก็สามารถที่จะเป็นพระอาจารย์ได้เช่นกัน The main thing is that they should not be thinking only about money. If they're going to be spiritual teachers, they can't be thinking about money. If we want to be a teacher, tip, นะครับสิ่งหลักๆเนี่ยเราไม่ควรจะคิดเรื่องเงินมาเกี่ยวข้อง If somebody is, if someone is thinking only about money for maintaining his family, then it is not a good idea to think about being a spiritual master. หากวันนั้นเนี่ยเอานักครอบครัวเนี่ยเพียงแค่คิดเรื่องเงินในการดูแลครอบครัวอย่างเดียวเนี่ยก็ไม่ดีสำหรับการปฏิบัติมาในระดับของพระอาจารย์ One must be free from material uh, responsibilities in order to properly take up the spiritual duty. เขาอันดับแรกควรที่จะเป็นอิสระจากกิจกรรมผลทางวัตถุซะก่อนและค่อยๆพัฒนามาในระดับของกิจกรรมทิพย์ So one who has accepted sannyas, he is forbidden to accept devotees or to accept disciples who are not qualified. ผู้คนที่รับเอาชีวิตสัญญาสิมาปฏิบัติถ้าไม่ให้รับเสาที่ผู้ที่ไม่เหมาะสม The sannyasi has to he has to examine these people to see if they're actually qualified to be disciples. สัญญาสิควรตรวจสอบว่าลูกศิษย์ของตนมีความจริงใจในการแสวงหาเพื่อให้สิทธิสำนึกหรือไม่ He has to examine them and see if they're actually they they genuinely they're very sincere. They really want to become Krishna conscious. เขาต้องตรวจสอบอย่างดีนะครับแล้วว่าเสาของลูกศิษย์ของเขาเนี่ยต้องการที่จะรับใช้ Krishna มาปฏิบัติ Krishna จิตสำนึกอย่างจริงจังหรือเปล่า So that is why when people come to Krishna consciousness, we do not immediately give them initiation. เพราะว่าบุคคลที่มาในคริสต์ในสมัยนี้รุ่นใหม่ๆอาจารย์ก็จะทรงไม่ได้ให้อุปสมบทโดยตรง The teacher has to examine the 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 devotee to see if he is really genuine, if he is really chanting, is he really following the instructions, does he do what the teacher says? พระอาจารย์หรือครูบาอาจารย์เขาจะทดสอบเรานะครับว่าเราพร้อมที่จะผ่านข้อสอบนี้หรือเปล่านะครับเราพร้อมที่จะตรวจสอบรอบทุกๆวันหรือปฏิบัติศีลสี่ทุกวันหรือเปล่า Hare Krishna So just as the student Before he accepts a guru, he should examine the guru to see if the guru is genuine. เช่นเดียวกันหากลูกศิษย์เนี่ยพร้อมที่จะรับพระอาจารย์ทิพลูกศิษย์ก็ต้องดูว่าพระอาจารย์ทิพของตนเนี่ยเป็นทรงเหมาะสมกับคนท่านใดนะครับ And the guru will examine the student to see if the student is really practicing. และพระอาจารย์ก็ทรงทดสอบลูกศิษย์ว่าลูกศิษย์เนี่ยพร้อมที่จะผ่านข้อสอบหรือเปล่า He will he will come and see did does the student get up in the morning to go to Mongol a r t i or does he just lay and sleep อาหารลูกศิษย์เนี่ยตื่นตอนเช้ามามังลาตีหรือเปล่าหรือว่าเขานอนอยู่ He will want to see what time does this person wake up in the morning พระอาจารย์จะดูว่าเขาเนี่ยตื่นตอนเช้าตรู่กี่โมง And what does what does what does he do in the morning? Does he chant? ตื่นมาเขาทำอะไรสวดมนต์หรือเปล่า 
So they have to be tested before they get accepted. So if somebody is not chanting, if they don't get up in the morning for Mongol RT, then they're not qualified to get initiation. So Lord Chaitanya is very merciful and he has said that all spiritual teachers should speak about Krishna everywhere. So the devotees of, in, in the line of Lord Chaitanya, they will go, they will travel everywhere to speak about Krishna consciousness and to distribute Krishna consciousness. And if somebody is serious about becoming a, de a devotee, then the sannyasi should accept him and give him a chance. He doesn't know, he doesn't know if the devote, if he's very sincere or not, but he gives him a chance, he takes a risk. So Srila Prabhupada explains why the spiritual teacher will take that risk. And Prabhupada said, if we don't have enough dis people, if we don't have enough disciples, then you won't be able to spread Krishna consciousness very easily. And therefore, that's why the sannyasi will sometimes make, he will take a risk and he will accept someone who may not be a proper devotee. The person's not actually fit to become a devotee, but the, the sannyasi may take a risk. So in the beginning, the, 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 the person may not, may not be qualified to be a devotee, but gradually he may become qualified and he may become a good devotee. We accept somebody as a devotee, we give them beats, we accept them, and so they get, they get the beats, they start to chant. And we, and we tell them, you have to get up in the morning, you have to come to Mongo Arti. And you have, and you have to chant every day. And every day you have to chant at least 16 rounds. 
So then when, when we get more disciples, then you can do more preaching work. But if we take more disciples just to get name, oh, he's a big guru, he has so many disciples, then that's very bad. He, he's, he's, been, he's giving initiation to get people, he just wants to get a name, just to get fame for himself as being a big guru. Or sometimes people will accept disciples just simply to get money from them. Sometimes they think, if they think, oh, this person, he's a very rich man, oh, I want him to be my disciple, then I will get his money. So if the guru thinks like that, then it's very bad. Can, can we mute these other people? I don't like this noise in the background, you know. Okay. Uh, So if the guru does like that, if he accepts people just simply for his own sake and not for giving them Krishna consciousness, then that guru will get problems and he will have spiritual difficulty. <laughs> So, it's, Prabhupada also said, even though you may be a spiritual teacher, it doesn't mean you have to read a lot of books. Sometimes people, they think, oh, I will, have, I will read a lot of books, I'll let people see it. I'm a big scholar. And then they will want to go and give lectures on many different topics and they will want to become famous as a big talker, a big lecturer. So devotee spiritual teachers, they have to be very careful to avoid that tendency. And the sannyasi also shouldn't be enthusiastic about building big temples. That sannyasi, so, in the line of, in our line of disciplic succession, there are many acharyas, but they did not build many temples. Lord Chaitanya personally didn't build any temple. But he did tell the Goswamis that when they went to Vrindavan, 
they could have a temple. They could build a temple for, for themselves. But the devotee will only build a temple if somebody comes to give the money. The, the, the generally the sannyasis they don't have any money. But if somebody comes forward to give the money, then they can use that money to build the temple. That is the best way to use money. When you get a lot of money, it's, it's good to use it to build the temple. And you can make nice deity worship and offer, make nice dresses and have a, a very opulent deity worship. So Prabhupada describes just like Rupa Goswami, he was living in Vrindavan and he didn't have any money. But then this one very famous man who was, his name was Maharaj Man Singh and he was the commander of the army of Emperor Akbar. So he came to Rupa Goswami and he asked him, how can I serve? What can I do to serve? So Rupa Goswami told him that you can build a temple for Govinda. Govinda was the name of the deity which Rupa Goswami was worshipping. Govinda. And so he wanted to have a nice temple for the home, for Rupa God, for Govinda Ji, that he could be nicely worshipped. And so this man who was the, in charge of the army, he Used, he got a lot of money and he used it to build a big temple. And that temple is still there today. It's a very beautiful temple. But but the, the spiritual teacher, he shouldn't take any responsibility to build the temple. But if somebody else has money, then that money can be used for the service of Krishna. Rupa Goswami is an acharya and he's teaching us by his example. Rupa Goswami is an acharya and he's teaching us by his example. And he used the devotee's money to build a nice temple for Govinda Ji. Now, sometimes it happens that you get people who they're not really fit to be a spiritual teacher. 
บางครั้งก็มีบุคคลที่ไม่เหมาะสมมาเป็นพระอาจารย์ทิพย์ได้ So they may go to people, they may go to rich people to ask money to build a temple. ก็อาจจะไปหาบุคคลที่มีความร่ำรวยเพื่อเอาเงินมาทำบุญสร้างวัด So if if the rich people give money to this unqualified spiritual teacher, then it's not good. หากบุคคลที่มีความร่ำรวยมากส่งให้เงินในการสร้างวัดต่อพระอาจารย์ที่ผู้ไร้คุณวุฒิก็เป็นสิ่งที่ไม่ดี The problem is that the spiritual teacher who's not really qualified he may use the money to make to make a nice comfortable place for him to live ปัญหาก็คือเงินที่เอามาสร้างวัดเนี่ยเขาจะใช้ในการอยู่ของตัวเองให้มีการสะดวกสบายยิ่งขึ้น And he he may he he won't actually do any real preaching work, but he just builds a temple for himself that he can live nicely. ก็จะไม่ได้ส่งเสริมในการช่วยในการพัฒนาคริสเนสสำนึกมากแต่ว่าเขาสร้างวัดเพื่อให้ตัวเองเนี่ยอยู่อย่างสะดวกสบาย And they have the deity. They put a deity there, and then they'll be there, and then people will come and see the deity, and they will give money. ก็จะมีพระปฏิมาในวัดนั้นและผู้คนก็จะให้เงินทองมากมายและผู้คนก็จะส่งให้การเงินกุศล So in this way, people have to be very cautious about who they give money to. และในทางนี้เนี่ยเราต้องระมัดระวังเป็นอย่างยิ่งว่าเรากำลังให้เงินกับใครอยู่ People come asking money to build a temple. We should be very cautious about it. ผู้คนเนี่ยกำลังที่จะมาขอที่จะมาสร้างวัดเนี่ยเราก็ต้องดูว่าบุคคลนั้นเนี่ยเป็นใคร Right. The real business of the devotee is not just to build a temple, but to make spiritual advancement. หัวใจหลักของสาวคือไม่ได้เป็นการสร้างวัดอย่างเดียวแต่ว่าเป็นการให้ช่วยในการพัฒนาคริสเตียนสำนึก We can make spiritual advancement without building big temples. เราสามารถเพิ่มระดับของพิชิตสำนึกโดยไม่ต้องสร้างวัดก็ได้ All we have to do is preach and chant the holy name เพียงแค่สวดมหามนต์และเผยแพร่พิชิตที่สำนึก And then we can make spiritual advancement เราก็จะสามารถที่จะพัฒนาพิชิตสำนึกได้ But still if somebody comes with a lot of money and they want to then they can build a big temple แต่หากผู้คนร่ำรวยเนี่ยมาช่วยในการสนับสนุนสร้างวัดก็สามารถที่จะส่งเสริมเรื่องนี้ได้เช่นกัน So the real business of the devotee is to preach and to distribute the message of Krishna หน้าที่หลักของสาวก็คือการที่เผยแพร่พระนามศักดิ์สิทธิ์ของคริชนา And Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati Maharaj, he recommends that a spiritual teacher should print books. Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati Maharaj, na song klaw na kap, song nena ham hai lau nia phai phai nang sir, tim nang sir. If we get money, instead of building temples. We should just use the money to print books. If we get money to build a temple, we should use the money to print books. And the books can be in And the books can be in different languages for all for spreading Krishna consciousness movement. ทุกคนทุกแห่งแล้วก็สามารถจะพัฒนาในกระชั้นสำนึกได้เร็วขึ้น
this is, this is a very important section there. It's a lot of instructions in this, this section. So three main three main points. First point is don't accept unqualified disciples. You can have many disciples if they're qualified. But if they're not qualified, better not to have any disciples. And don't build costly temples. If somebody comes with money and they want to build a temple, okay, that's good. But if we have some money, we can use it to print books. And then the third thing, we should not be too eager to read a lot of books. Alright, we'll go ahead. The next heading is to be straightforward in ordinary dealings and to be to maintain one's equilibrium in loss and gain. So there's a statement in the Padma Purana. People who are in Krishna consciousness should not be disturbed by some material gain or loss. Even if we lose something material, we lose all of our money, we should not be disturbed. We should simply always think of Krishna within our heart. So Prabhupada explains, the, the, the point is that every conditioned soul is very absorbed, very attached in thinking about materialistic activities. And we have to get free, we have to free ourselves from the thoughts of material things. We want to become Krishna conscious. So the basic principle of Krishna consciousness is to always think of Krishna and we shouldn't be disturbed about losing material things. What we have to do is when we lose things, we have to concentrate our mind on Krishna. And if we get material gain, we should think this is Krishna's mercy. We should think I don't deserve all this, but Krishna is encouraging me. 
หากเราได้กําไรผลทางวัตถุมาเราก็ควรจะคิดว่านี่คือพระเมตตาที่คุณของกฤษณาเราไม่ควรคิดว่าเราเป็นคนหามาด้วยตัวเอง And when we get a loss, some material things are taken from us. We think, actually, I'm such a bad person. I should suffer more. But Krishna is reduced to suffering. ถ้าเรารู้สึกถ้าเราขาดกำไรครับเราก็ควรที่จะคิดว่าฉันเนี่ยทำผิดพลาดเองฉันควรที่จะทุกทรมานมากกว่านี้นะครับ Krishna เนี่ยทรงให้ฉันเนี่ยมีความทุกข์ทรงปกป้องเรานะครับทรงให้มีความทุกข์ที่น้อยลง So when we get something, we should not be rejoicing, and when we lose something, we should not lament. ฉะนั้นเนี่ยเวลาเรามีกำไรเรามีอะไรบางสิ่งบางอย่างได้มาเนี่ยเราก็ไม่ควรที่จะอาหังเวลาเราสูญเสียมากไปเนี่ยเราก็ไม่ควรที่จะวันไหวกับสิ่งนั้น So there's a, a a good verse from the Padma Purana which describes what we should be like. ก็ทรงได้กล่าวในปัจมาปรานะนะก็มีสโลกที่สวยงาม And the Padma Purana says, within the heart of a person who is overpowered by lamentation or anger, then there is no possibility of Krishna ever being manifested. พัดมาบุรณะนะครับดังดังเช่นภายในหัวใจของคนที่ถูกความเศร้าโศกหรือความโกรธครอบงำเป็นไปไม่ได้ที่เขาจะพัฒนาพระเจ้าสำนึกได้เลย All right. Then the next heading is said the demigods. What about the by the Allah Tevada? So it says we should not respect. We should not neglect to offer proper respect to the demigods. เราไม่ควรละเลยในการแสดงความเคารพต่อเหล่าเทวดา We may not. Of course, we are not devotees of the demigods. But we should not disrespect them. เราอาจไม่ใช่สาวกของเราเทวดาแต่ไม่ได้หมายความว่าเราไม่ควรให้ความเคารพต่อพวกท่าน We should be respectful to all living entities, even the, especially the demigods. เราต้องให้ความเคารพต่อทุกทุกสิ่งมีชีวิตโดยพิเศษต่อเหล่าเทวดา So, example is given that a Vaishnava is not a devotee of Lord Shiva or Lord Brahma. ตัวอย่างเช่น Vaishnava ไม่ได้เป็นสาวกของพระศิวะหรือพระพรหม But when you get such big famous demigods as Lord Brahma or Lord Shiva, then little people like ourselves, we should be very careful to respect them properly. แต่เป็นหน้าที่ที่ผูกมัดว่าต้องแสดงความเคารพประการทั้งปวงต่อเหล่าเทวดาผู้มีสถานภาพที่สูงสูงส่งเช่นนี้ We have to offer all respects to these important demigods. เราต้องให้ความเคารพอย่างยิ่งต่อเหล่าเทวดา And Prabhupada says, according to Vaishnava philosophy. A devotee of Krishna should offer respect even to a tiny insect, like an ant. ชลบุพสงกล่าวตามปรัชญาของเวชนวะว่าเราควรแสดงความเคารพแม้แต่มดอยู่กับพระพุทธเจ้าที่ไหนก็ตามที่เราไปที่ศาลาฮินดูเจ้าแห่งหนึ่งเราไปที่ศาลาฮินดูเจ้าแห่งหนึ่งเราไปที่ศ
and they had a big picture of Brahma, Vishnu and Shiva. So at that time Prabhupada told to all the people there, he said, devotee of Krishna not only offers respects to Brahma, Vishnu and Shiva, they will offer respect even to a tiny insect like an ant. So Krishna is the master of all the demigods. Krishna so we always worship Krishna. But that does not mean that we don't offer respect to the demigods. We have to also give respect to the demigods. Okay, we'll stop here tonight. Are there any questions? Okay. Seem like no, no questions tonight. Okay. Oh, yes, yes. Got it, got it. From uh, Vaishnavi Mataji. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, my humble obeisances, all glories to Srila Prabhupada. Um, we read that we, we should not be eager to construct costly temples, but we can uh, try to have a small center, Guru Maharaj, like that. Um. Well, every, everything according to your time and place and circumstances. Sometimes you can meet, you can go to the park, you just sit in the park and you can meet with devotees and chant. You can tell them about Krishna there. You don't have to have your own center. When Prabhupada would, went first to America, sometimes they would have the program, they'd meet the program, they'd have it in the garage. They go to they couldn't get in the person's house, they'd just go to the garage and they'd sit in their garage and have the class. <laughs> The point, the point is if you have a center, then you have to, then there will be expenses, you have to have money, you have to, you know, you have to be thinking to pay the rent, and then also there may have problems also with neighbors. Sometimes we, we have a center and we get it's so it's so much trouble to maintain it. There's you need money all the time to pay the rent and to to have it takes 
and hardly you, you the center you may use it only once a week การที่เราจะทําให้เซ็นเตอร์เนี่ยดําเนินไปอย่างต่อเนื่องเนี่ยก็เป็นสิ่งที่ยากมากนะครับเราก็ต้องจ่ายค่าเช่าในการดูแล
จากเหล่าเทวดาแล้วเราสามารถที่จะร่วมทานอาหารประสาทของเหล่าเทวดาได้หรือเปล่านะครับ Devotees only take Krishna prasadam. We don't take any other prasadam. I mean, we don't we don't eat food cooked by non-devotees. So you're better not to take their prasadam, what they're offering. ดีกว่าเราไม่ควรที่จะไปรับอาหารที่ไม่ได้ถวายให้กับพระชนะ I don't know these people I don't know I don't think they're strict followers of Madhvacharya if they're worshiping demigods พระอาจารย์ทรงไม่รู้ว่าเขาพวกเขาเนี่ยทรงมีความเข้มขัดในในสายสายของมัดวัจาริยาหรือเปล่า Yeah. Yes, Guru Maharaj, I understand. But it, it depends the mood which they have in worshiping. If they understand that the demigods are part of the limbs of the body of Lord Krishna, then it's all right. Yeah, they understand, Guru Maharaj. Then they have a yeah, they have a understanding that Krishna is the supreme Lord. Like demigods are part and parcels. They have that understanding, but they go to the demigod. Uh, Temple, which uh, the Sri Lankan people run, and they ha they worship, they do the worship regularly, and they also take food from them. Yeah. Maharaj, I'm so sorry. We have to be very careful. But if they know that the Lord of the Universe is the Lord of the Universe, then it's okay. 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 Well, I would be very cautious. Devotees, you should just say, I, I only eat at home. I don't eat outside. Yeah. Yes, Guru Maharaj. Yeah. Thank you so much, Guru Maharaj. Okay, thank you. Okay, there are no more questions tonight, Archana. Uh, no more, Guru Maharaj. You are the you are the teacher, the mother, the the Gorn Wa. Yogara. One more, Guru Maharaj. Okay. My question is: Are uh, love for Krishna and uh, devotion to Krishna uh, different things? Because we uh, use uh, them uh, as synonyms, and uh, uh, maybe. Mm, uh, is it possible to have uh, devotion to Krishna without love for Krishna? Maji, Maji, ko song pao na kaba kwam ra kong Krishna le kanu titon si sara lab shay Krishna. No. Kai kai kun kan lu pao na kab. No, it's not possible. Devotion, love means devotion. Kwam ra. No. We talk about devotional service. Right. You love someone, you show your love by service. And love and devotion are the same thing. Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay, Yuvati Sachi. Uh, thank you, Guru Maharaj, for your explanation. It's very clear now. Thank you so much. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Okay, so we're going to stop here tonight. Thank you very much, Yogeshwara Prabhu, for translation. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Thank you, Archana. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Srila Prabhupada ki jai. Gorbhati Vrinda ki jai.